Here is a nice cut section of a lung. Here is the pulmonary parenchyma, and here are some relatively thick-walled pulmonary arteries. Notice that they appear to be distended. Notice also that they are just jam-packed with blood clot material. It's not just the kind of red gelatinous blood you normally see post-mortem, but there are areas in it perhaps that are look more fibrinous or whiter than usual. Here is the same thing microscopically now. A portion of the lung which still has aerating alveoli and an artery which is filled with blood clot has the thick wall classical of an artery and perhaps some areas like here in which it's not just a big mass of blood clot but perhaps there is some fibrin starting to form as well. This could uh, very easily firmly attach this clot to the wall of the vessel which is another feature of a pulmonary embolism rather than a post-mortem blood clot. Also uh, you should understand that almost all of the clots that are inside of pulmonary arteries at any time in your life or death probably in most cases 99 percent of the time do not form there they form in blood vessels uh, in other parts of the body chiefly the deep veins of the legs and pelvis and then travel through the normal cardiac route into the uh, pulmonary veins, I'm sorry, pulmonary arteries, anatomically speaking. Also notice that even though this area of blood of uh, lung is clotted with a big clot, that uh, most of the time the lung still ventilates. And that is the classical hallmark of a pulmonary embolism, is that there is no perfusion to the lung but there is still ventilation. And this forms the basis for a lot of diagnostic tests. And the term VQ mismatch refers to the fact that in pulmonary uh, embolism, there is still ventilation, as you could see air out here, but no perfusion, as you could see the uh, pulmonary uh, vessel is uh, blocked. Also remember that even though this pulmonary vessel is blocked, uh, usually there is still circulation uh, by the bronchial uh, circulation. Thank you very much.